So the the concept model is getting pretty close to finished at this point, and I just have one little section left, and I've been saving it to last because it's probably uh, one of my favorite parts, and it was the part that gave me the most trouble. If you remember from the sketch phase, it's this the abdomen of this guy. So at some point, uh, my art director came in and saw me working on this, and he he remembered the sketch, and he said, "Hey, wouldn't it be cool gameplay wise if?" the back of this guy, those little holes you had, you put all over the abdomen, actually shot out some kind of missiles or something like that, like an organic, you know, spines or something like that, that that stabbed the, the player, or, you know, some little gameplay element that wasn't in the design doc, and I thought it was a cool idea, and, and whether it actually makes it in the game or not, it doesn't matter, um, because spikes are cool, and anything locust has tons of spikes, so why not go ahead and run with it, so... I'm going to go ahead and start adding some little spiny spiny bits here and, and kind of make it look like there are spines coming out of these little orifices all over his abdomen. And I'll build one here real quick and then use one of my favorite programs, a little app for 3D Max, uh, use Advanced Painter and just slap a bunch of these on here. So again, I'm not worried about, you know, it being perfect. So as I'm doing this, uh, um, a lot of people ask me how I got started in concepting or what I did to to uh, to get you know where I'm at working on Gears of War and things like that. And um, I've been concepting for about eight years, and I would say that the single most important source for me that's always helped me out is the, the online community. Anyone starting out, you know, I get emails all the time, you know, kids asking me, what do I do to get started? I'd say the most important thing by far is uh, getting involved in the online community. There's forums and websites dedicated to concept art, and it's a really tight community. And just getting on one of those and start posting your work and asking for advice. And it's shocking how the most professional guys in the industry are on there talking, you know, critiquing kids' work. And it's, it's probably the best resource I could absolutely imagine. Um, and that's really what helped me out in the beginning as I started. Uh, when I started concepting for games, I think it was like seven or eight years ago, I started posting up on on uh, a couple of the forums and just getting input from guys and and it's it's just helped me immensely and staying in contact with guys you know developing a rapport with some of the some of these professionals because a lot of the guys are you know we're all you know we all started out just drawing monsters you know at our kitchen table when we were kids so we all have the same background and. Most of the guys are just incredibly humble and want to do everything they can to help other people out. So that was my little aside on how to, uh, on what helped me kind of progress as a as a concept artist. That and being willing to to work your butt off the first few years, you really gotta. It's such a competitive industry. You you really gotta put in the time and effort in the beginning to to establish yourself in my opinion so you can see here I've, I've just uh, thrown on a bunch of little random spikes and these little small things you know that if I were to do giant big spikes it would it would it would uh, it wouldn't lend itself to the the sense of scale of this guy so itty bitty tons of itty bitty little spikes it makes it look like this abdomen really is huge and has weight you know um, and again, just randomly placing them, and I'm going to put some little ones on here to contrast the big ones and kind of show that they taper off. And in the beginning, I talked about having a hook, and I wasn't sure what, what the hook of this guy was going to be. And I'd say at this point that probably this little spiky abdomen ended up being the hook, and it was it was probably the thing I struggled with the most in the beginning. So it kind of came full circle, and... It took me a while to kind of get to this point, but like I said, you just got to keep banging away at something, and uh, you know these happy little accidents will happen, and and uh, ended up being something I was pretty pleased with. 
So I'll just dot a bunch of these little guys in here. Yeah. So this guy's looking pretty close to done. Uh, if I took this, it'd be ludicrous for me to take this concept model any further. I could go in and do nuts and bolts and things like that, and sometimes I will, but it's so easy to paint those in in Photoshop that I'm not going to worry about it for this guy because I've already spent so much time um, working up this this part of them. So the rest is just going to be painting in detail. Um, before I do some, uh, there was one more thing I wanted to add here. It just occurred to me. Most of the locust creatures have... Uh, like it looks like someone went in and hacked some talons or spikes off another creature and kind of strapped them onto the armor and again it's that cobbled look that the locust tech has and it's something Kevin Lanning started with the original Brumac and I like to try to keep things consistent throughout the every creature that's on on these sections just add a little more visual interest what's interesting about these side plates is I didn't ever think about it but when you see the the uh, it end up this thing ended up being called the Hydra. When you see the Hydra in game, Kevin came up with this these, this idea that these things would open up and be kind of missile bays, and it's something I hadn't considered at all. And it's cool to see other people take your work, your ideas, and kind of add their own influence to it. So, so there we go. Perfect. It's a cherry on top. It's exactly what it needed. You can see I freeze most of the model because it's getting so complex now that it's almost impossible to select individual sections. And I just, at this point, I'm just grouping stuff and hacking it on there. It's time to wrap this sucker up. So, put some spikes up on the gun. Put some spikes on his head. A few little spikes on the abdomen. Spikes just makes this stuff cool. And it also differentiates it from the the cog stuff. There's nothing there's nothing on the gear side that has spikes on it, so immediately you know this is a bad guy. So he's looking pretty hefty. I like the fact uh, he's starting to look like a, a toy that I'd, I'd like to play with, even though I'm 35 years old. And I don't play with toys, just to uh, qualify that. But I think there were these toys when I was a kid. They were called sectors, sectors or something like that. And these guys run around, rode around on bugs. And they're kind of goofy, but... This, this thing's starting to look like an absolutely steroided version of that. <laughs> so that's that's when I know I'm, I'm getting pretty close, as I can actually imagine being a kid and opening this thing up for Christmas and wanting to play with it. So here I'm just going to... I'm just monkeying around with that and some shapes. It's about time to wrap this dude up. 